Oh, it's so good. I actually don't know why more people aren't drinking this grape. I'm Matthew Horky. For the last seven years, I've traveled around the world tasting thousands of wines annually in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. So I know most of the videos on the channel are either blind tasting, reaction, or travel vlog adventure type videos, but today's gonna be a little bit different. Today is gonna be more like a practical think piece. So today's videos are gonna be about one thing and one thing only. Matthew's Guide to Good Wine. So for those of you out there that can't afford the thousands of dollars to enroll in the WSET program, the WSET Diploma program, the Master of Wine program, just watch this video over and over again and I promise you'll be okay. Let's begin. First, let's talk about price. Price doesn't matter. Let me explain. First of all, I get to defend myself because there's probably some comments right now saying, you know, it's easy for you to say, you get all these expensive wines sent to you to taste a sample for free. You get invited to all these tastings. And that's very true, but I didn't always. Some of the most memorable wines in my life have been the least expensive. This is a picture of me back in graduate school when I was backpacking around Europe. I was drinking wine back then, but I didn't, you know, I didn't really know that much. I remember sitting down in the walled city of Lucca in Tuscany and ordering this liter of Sangiovese. It was a red wine. I assume it was Sangiovese. We're in Tuscany. And I can remember just sitting there and smelling that for like five minutes straight. All my friends looked at me like I was some kind of weirdo. And that still to this day was one of the most memorable wines of my life. And that wine was like five euros a liter. And you know, at the end of the day, I don't need to spend a ton to drink. Right now I'm enjoying lighter medium bodied reds or even light whites. I have this Beaujolais right here this Moulin au Vent for it was 25 bucks. Mm. It's not the most complex red wine in the world, but it is delicious, easy to drink. Yes, it is. If only expensive wines were the good wines, then there's not a lot of people out there that would know a lot about wine. It probably wouldn't be as enjoyable. Take for instance, this Bordeaux, which has the most expensive release price in the world. I don't know a ton of people that can afford to drink that kind of wine. So honestly, a few years ago, somebody gifted me a bottle of 2009 Lieberpatter. I took it to a blind tasting with a bunch of collectors and we sat down, we tasted a lot of wines. Okay, it wasn't like a bunch of wine writers. It was just fun, but these were serious collectors. And while yes, the wine showed really well, a wine that came close, and I mean, it was like neck and neck, was a Chateau Porto Carras from Greece. Lieberpatter is a Bordeaux blend, so is the Porto Carras. Us. That wine is under 20 bucks in the US. I was taking casual notes. I scored the Libra Pattern like 94. I scored the Porto Carras like 93, 93 plus. I mean, it was right there. And some people actually preferred the Porto Carras before we even revealed it. Really, it just comes down to your preference. That's what I want to talk about right now. The importance of you, your palate. But okay, wait a minute. Before we get started, here's a quick overview of wines I recommend. If you really want to learn about wine, drink better wines, you got to get out of the supermarket, get to a wine shop. I actually made a video about how to choose wine at a shop like a pro. I'll put that in the description box below. Let's start out with Chardonnay. Chardonnay is super versatile because a bigger style, it can appeal to red wine drinkers. It can also appeal to those that like white wines. There are a lot of crap Chardonnays out there. One thing that I recommended if you're in the US is the Aubon Clamont Chardonnay from Santa Barbara County. It's only 20 to 22 bucks. I I think it's a fantastic wine for the money. The proprietor, the founder of the company, Jim Clendenin, passed away a couple years ago. Rest in peace, Jim. Wines are still beautiful. If you're in Europe, other parts of the world, there are good Chardonnays being made at affordable prices. Just ask your local shop. If you want to step up and drink like I, what I think the grape that offers the most bang for the buck in terms of deliciousness, complexity, you got to be drinking Riesling. They're super affordable. I know it's very intimidating. I would just go to your local shop, ask for and inexpensive dry. Look for the word Schrocken. One that I recommend that's widely available is the Eroica. It's only 20 bucks, sometimes even 17 bucks. Oh, it's so good. I actually don't know why more people aren't drinking this grape. Pinot Noir is a grape that a lot of people like. A lot of times it's hard to get good value for money Pinot Noir. Me personally, the great Pinot Noirs of the world are made in Burgundy, of course. However, when I'm at a certain price range and I'm just not blowing a bunch of cash, I usually find Australian Pinot Noir in New Zealand, those from California, Oregon, to be more dependable. I found recently, last year, a good one I can recommend. It's under 20 bucks called the Pinot Project, made with fruit from Santa Barbara County. I'll put that right up there. 
Another option is a lot of times people go with Cru Beaujolais. It's made from Gamay, it's just south of Burgundy. You can get some really nice ones at 25 bucks. This one I just tasted earlier, Moulin Event, the Jean-Paul Dubosch. 25 bucks, My, the most mind-blowing Cru Beaujolais in the world, but was it delicious? Was it good? Yes, it's very good. And it's all about knowing your personal taste. For me, I love Chianti Classico Reserva. I just tasted this one on video, the Castella de Ama Monteboni Chianti Classico Reserva, 2019. This is, okay, yes, this is a sample. I got for free, but I've seen this in the US for 40, 45 bucks. For my palate, personally, I'm biased. To me, this is like a 95, 96 point wine. It's the type of wine I want to drink every day. You want a bigger, heavier wine, you want to look to Bordeaux. I think it offers more value for money. This is the Chateau Beaumont Home Adult 2018. Just tasted this on video. Found this under 25 bucks all around the world, sometimes as low as 17 bucks. If those want to step up and want to go to Napa, want to try Napa, some, one of the most prestigious regions of the world that's also expensive, I have the Silverado Vineyards. This is the estate-grown Cabernet Sauvignon 2018. It's listed at 60, but I've seen it as low as 35 bucks. I always recommend this wine. Also, if you like big red wines, I think Chateauneuf de Pop offers a lot of value. Look to Spain, Portugal. What about Merlot? The great people like to poo-poo on. No, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any fucking Merlot! Some of the greatest wines in the world are actually Merlot based wines. Wines like this, this is a Miani Philippe Merlot. He makes a Philippe and a Bory Merlot. I think this is one of the greatest red wines I've ever had in the world, except it's super rare. The price is not very friendly. So we're looking about $300, $350 if you can find it. But if you want to step it up, you can go up to Chateau Cheval Blanc, one of my favorite wines of all time. It's only a cool $1,200 a bottle. And then if you want to be big baller, you can step up to a Petrus that comes in a cool $6,000 Six thousand dollars a bottle. In my experience, the difference between a six thousand dollar and one thousand dollar bottles like this, the difference between a one thousand dollar, three hundred dollar bottles like this. Generally speaking, wine follows this graph. Cheaper wines, they can be pretty good, but really, you get a spike in quality once you hit the twenty-five dollar range. This Beaujolais I was talking about, it's 25 bucks. It's actually pretty darn good. But once you start to spend a little bit more, the quality can go way up to 50 bucks. This wine right here, the Chianti Classico I was talking about, that's 40 bucks. As you spend more, you get less and less quality on your return. Your palate is what's important. Your palate is golden. Your palate is what determines what is a good wine. Your preferences, that's you, you, you. Let me do another diagram. Your palate is king. Your palate determines what wine is good. All of these things are trying to get in there and influence your palate. But this is the most important thing. Wine criticism is really hard because it's usually just one person or a panel trying to determine if a wine's good or not, but they don't know your palate. On top of that, our taste, our flavor, is all based on neurology, which is so complex. Seriously, when I was a practicing chiropractor, I studied a lot of neurology. I remember one scientist, don't quote me on these numbers, something like 50 trillion bits of information are going through our mind every second, and we're only consciously aware of 50 of them. Now think about that. There are a thousand volatile compounds in a glass of wine, so it's super complex, a thousand different aromas. And if we're only conscious of 50 bits of information per second, how many of that is dedicated actually to smell? There's no wonder why wine is always changing. It's so complex because our changing, the way we process information is changing. Seriously, I remember being in a workshop with a perfume consultant. He had isolated all these different aromas and I was sitting next to a collector and they were passing out all these isolated aromas and cinnamon came around. And to me, it was clear as day, but the guy next to me, the collector, he could not smell cinnamon at all. That made me realize, wow, everybody's palate is different. And on top of that, our preferences change. Do you want to eat the same thing every day? Some days I feel like Thai food. Sometimes I want Indian food. Sometimes I want Italian food. And that's what I love about Italy so much, the diversity of cuisine. And seriously, the only way to know what your particular palate is, what your preferences are, is you got to taste, taste, taste. And thankfully, it's pretty easy nowadays thanks to technology, knowledge about working in the cellar, working in the vineyards. Good wines are being made all over the world. Even just 30 years ago, a lot of the wines were flawed. But now, it's really difficult to find a bad wine. I love all the stuff that's around wine, the history.
history, the culture, but I do know at the end of the day, it's just fermented grape juice. Some people say, why are you taking it so seriously? But you know what? We need people in the world to take different things seriously. Ultimately, a good bottle of wine keeps the people that you love at the table longer, keeps your family together longer, keeps a great date going longer, and the conversations just flow a little bit differently when wine's on the table. And I like to think of how many different decisions that affected the entire world took place in the last couple hundred years with wine at the table. Heck, the Declaration of Independence, it was signed and celebrated with a glass of Madeira. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.